This is our new project. It's a Cummings GGMC 6113 slash Onan RS30000 generator set. Runs on propane. It's a 30 kilowatt generator. And we'll talk a little bit about this project. Inside, we have a four liter Ford four cylinder engine. The whole generator set has 250 hours on it. These panels are insulated and they're aluminum so they don't rust. It's an 1800 RPM motor, so it's pretty quiet. I mean, it's water cooled. Propane comes in here from our tank. We ran three quarter inch line, 18 inches deep in the ground from our tank. And we run 10 PSI out of the first regulator, down to the second regulator, where we get 11 inches of water column, or a little bit under half a PSI, with a three quarter inch pipe buried 16 inches. Going to the house, we have two conduits. Um, a high power conduit, which is a two inch conduit. It has four one slash zero wires in it. And those are for hot, neutral, and ground. And uh, that's about it from the outside. Um, it's 20 degrees out here this morning. That was a cold temperature. It's about 30 right now. We'll go inside and flip the transfer switch and see how she starts. Okay, inside we've got our transfer switch, an automatic transfer switch. It's a General Electric, the ZTX. It's a 200 amp switch and this when we built the house gets wired up directly to one of our 200 amp panels. Uh, in the future we're going to connect this to the other panel um, with an interlock so that we can run both of these panels at the same time. Inside of here the smarts on the uh, Onan Cummings generators are inside the transfer switch. So this is what tells it when to turn on, when to turn off. Uh, what I added for the inside of here is two current transformers so we can monitor the current draw and the voltage of the system. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pretend that we have a power outage. So this is going to the main circuit breaker here for the 200 amp panel and this switch. So I'm going to turn this off and the lights are going to go off. And then with any luck, this generator will start up. Power just went out. Power went out. We heard the generator cranking up and we can see the voltage coming up here. Okay, now we've got 120 volts. Once it senses 120 volts, you heard that big kerchunk, and that's the power switching over to the generator power. Okay, and now we're at generator power right now, and you can see we're drawing 11 amps on one leg, 34 amps on the other leg, which you know, isn't a whole lot of power for this thing. So, uh, and back inside of here, here's my low voltage. Low voltage goes through this one inch conduit. The high power goes through the two inch conduit. And for anyone wanting to do this, Playing with these one zero wires or one knot wires is hard work. They're copper wires. They're physically very heavy to run all these wires and they're hard to bend. Um, and that's right now we're drawing about four amps on one leg and 27 amps on the other leg. We're going to turn every light on the house on and we're going to turn all the heat pumps on in both garages and see how much power we can get out of it. Okay, so now the generator has been running for five minutes and we do got both of the Mitsubishi splits turned on in both the shops. And we can see the one leg is drawing 44 amps, the other leg is drawing about 50 amps at 120 volts. So uh, this can put out over 100 amps, 120, 125 amps is what the circuit breaker is. So this is about all we can get right now until we connect up the other heat pumps for the main part of the house, which will happen next week as soon as our interlock shows up. So here we are running now. It's drawing about 50 amps on one leg and maybe 60 on the other leg, so we're drawing over 10 or 12 kilowatts out of it. It's been running for about five minutes and we're standing 15 feet away from it. So this gives you an idea of the 1800 RPM generators of um, how quiet they run compared to um, the Generac 3600 RPM generators. Um, looking at the base here, what we did was we uh, have a 16 inch concrete pad and it's um, three foot by about six foot and it goes down and it sits more than 16 inches. We've got gravel underneath it. We poured 64 80 pound bags of concrete inside of it. And then we surrounded it with some four by fours and some stone just to make it look nicer, help the drainage and have a little area to stand. Uh, and that's about the whole story on this.